Hello and welcome to yet another landscape photography editing video. Today I'm gonna take this raw file and turn it into something like this. This video will be a relatively fast paced video, not really much in depth explanation. So if you're looking for an in depth tutorial about Lightroom and landscape editing, I've made a couple of videos, just check the link in the description down below or click on the screen right now. Alright, so let's jump straight into it. What you see here is another exposure from the Isle of Skye in Scotland. Absolutely beautiful. A 10 second exposure this time, so I get the very silky and kind of smooth looking water, as well as a bit of movement in the clouds. So first thing I'm gonna do in this picture is straight away get rid of this boy with the spot removal tool. For that I'm just gonna click on it and I'm already done. I really did like this boy, it doesn't add to the picture at all. And then another thing I'm gonna do before I do anything else this time is just crop the image because I feel like this blue sky over here doesn't really add to the photo so I think I'm gonna crop this away. And actually I think I'm gonna try a 2 to 1 crop first of all. So let's see how this works. So we don't have any sky, I actually think that works quite well. Let me just try another one with a little bit of sky. Huh. I think I'm gonna stick with this crop for now. I always can change that later. Okay then, let's go into the basic adjustment. First thing I'm gonna do is erase the shadow all the way so we have a lot of details in them. Then I'm gonna drop down the highlight slider all the way as well so we get a lot of detail in the clouds. Then I'm just gonna play around with the blacks as always. Make sure they're just a little bit clipped, something like that. Then bring up the whites, hold down the old key to see wherever they are clipped. In the whites I don't want anything clipped. So I'm just gonna release that slider at plus 35. Then to clarity, I think this picture could use a bit of plus clarity because of all of the lines in the water from the 10 second exposure. The exposure isn't so long that it's completely silky. There's still a little bit of texture in the water so I think that clarity would pronounce that quite well. As well as the clouds, I actually like the look of the clouds when I add some clarity. Let's see how much I want to add though. Yeah, I think a hundred works best for here. So I'm gonna stick with that and go to contrast. Let's see if there's anything I like better than the default contrast. Don't really like the minus contrast look. Let's bring the slider up a bit. I really like the look of the contrast in the water, however on the land it's kind of too much when I add that much global contrast. So I think I'm just gonna stick with around plus 20 for now and gonna add some more contrast later in local adjustments with the adjustment brush. The overall exposure seems pretty good to me, I don't think I'm gonna add or decrease any of the overall exposures, I'm just gonna leave that at zero. Then to color temperature. Let me see if there's anything I like better. I really like the kind of bluish look. Something like that works actually quite well. I think I'm gonna stick there. Then to tint, let me play around with the tint. I don't think I'm gonna add too much there either. Definitely not gonna go into the greens. Maybe a tiny bit of magenta. Something around plus 16. Then overall vibrance and saturation, let me see here if I want to add some vibrance. I think I'm gonna add a little bit actually, just to kind of give some of the color back into the image that we've lost from the many clouds and from the raw file itself. Then down to the tonal curve, I'm gonna do my regular workflow and just first of all erase the highlight slider. And already we're getting a lot of detail and a lot of dynamic into the clouds. I think I'm gonna add quite a lot here, around plus 70. Then to the light slider, just gonna play around with that one, see if there's anything I like better. I actually kinda like it when I bring up the light slider because it adds some more dynamic into the water and also the clouds. However, the clouds and the sky is kind of overexposed, so let me fix that in a second actually, instead of doing that at the very end. First of all, I'm gonna play around with the dark sliders and see if there's anything I like better there. 
maybe if I drop them just lightly it kind of adds a bit more contrast to the foreground so I kind of like that to the shadow slider I think I may even bring that up a little bit just so we get a little bit more detail in this vegetation right here all right before I do anything else I'm gonna fix the sky exposure right here for that I'm gonna grab a graduated filter and just kind of drag it over the sky right here make sure it's kind of soft and not too harsh and then I'm gonna drop down the exposure until I have as much detail as I want while still remaining a lot of the dynamic I think that works quite well for now maybe I'm gonna bring this graduated filter down even further just a tiny bit and let me play around with the contrast that just affects the sky I don't think I want to add too much here, maybe just a tiny bit of a plus. Then the highlight slider as well. I'm gonna reset that one. Shadow slider, maybe a tiny bit of plus shadows for the sky. And the clarity. I think I'm gonna add some clarity for the sky. Okay, so we already have a very smooth looking sky with the kind of silky looking clouds from the 10 second exposure. As well, we have a lot of dynamic in it from this highlight slider and the tonal curve. Here's without the graduated filter to fix the exposure for the sky and here's with. Definitely adds a lot. So I'm gonna close the graduated filter and go on to point curve, see if there's any contrast setting I like better than the linear one. I don't think I'm going to add anything there, so I'm just going to stick with linear. Again, the highlight slider here is at zero, and you can see how the entire picture just loses so much dynamic and interest, especially the clouds over here. And here's at plus 70. The HSL tool, I've explained that a lot of times in my previous videos, so I'm just going to do you a favor and speed up the footage of me editing the HSL sliders. Okay, I'm back after messing around with the HSL sliders, here's without and here's with, a little bit of a difference. Then let's go straight down to split toning, I'm really not sure if I'm gonna add any color into the highlights or shadows, but I'm just gonna try out and see if there's anything that I like better than before. Don't really like this one too much. I might actually add some blues into the highlights, something that I really do very rarely. However, I think it works quite well for this photo. Of course, not that much, just around 10%. Then to the shadows, I'm just gonna play around with these as well and see if there's anything I like better than the default. I don't think I want any orange there. And yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that at zero. So let's go down to the detail tool, zooming in one to one, see if there's any sharpening needed. I think a tiny bit of sharpening could be added here, so let me see. Something around 40 I believe, yeah I think I'm gonna stick there. Zooming out again, holding down the alt key while bringing the masking slider to the right. And make sure there's not too much of the sky or of the water selected because I don't want to add any sharpening to those parts that would just introduce noise. Then in terms of noise reduction we've raised the shadows 100% so I think there's a little bit of noise in there. However, I don't think it's too much so I think we're good without raising the noise reduction tool. However, color slider as you surely know I really like that one. And there's definitely some purple and green sensor noise, especially over there. So I'm just going to raise the slider until all of that disappears. Around 50 does the job. Then down to lens corrections, I'm just going to do my basic stuff, enable profile corrections and just choose my lens. So we'll get rid of all of the distortion. However, I really like the vignetting, so I'm going to bring that down to zero and then to go to color and just remove chromatic aberration. Then in terms of vignetting, I'm not sure if I want to add any vignetting. I think it could look quite good, so let me try out here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with around minus 11. Here's without and here's with. 
maybe even gonna bring that up just a tiny bit to around minus 9. Then camera calibration, this would be something I would mess around with if I would edit this picture for myself. However, because those profiles and especially the sliders don't have a huge impact into the image, I'm just gonna save you a little bit of time and not gonna mess with these. But if you have the time for yourself, definitely mess around with these sliders. They definitely can change the look of your image and give you some more choices in terms of color and exposure that you like. With that said, I'm done with the global adjustments, so what I'm gonna do now is local adjustments. So since I've already took care of the sky, all I'm gonna do for now is just take an adjustment brush and kinda increase the contrast and I think I'm gonna introduce some plus exposure as well, really not too much. Make sure the feather is at the 100 and then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over this water down here, something like that. I think I kinda added too much contrast, so I think I'm gonna lower that to around plus 10. Then exposure, I might add even a bit more exposure actually. I think that looks quite well, but another thing I wanna do is grab another graduated filter but this time instead of bringing it over the sky, I'm just gonna bring it over the very bottom of the image right here and kinda make a rough edge. And then I'm gonna reset all of the settings for now and actually gonna drop down the exposure just so we have a little bit more vignetting and a bit more attention towards the center of the picture. And then the last thing I'm gonna do for this photo right here is grab a radial filter, make sure your feather is 200 and you invert the mask, that's very important, and then I'm just gonna add some dodge and burning. Okay, so as you can see, I've added quite a lot of dodge and burning. Here's without any dodge and burning, and here's with. Definitely adds a little bit more dynamic to the picture and complexifies the light a bit. So as always, let's check out the image, the raw file, without any adjustments to it. Here is the raw file without any editing to it. Really looks totally different, very flat really not that much contrast and dynamic in comparison to what we've done in around 10 minutes. And when I'm seeing the direct comparison, I think I might have added a bit too much vibrance actually. So let me try and reduce that to zero again. And I think I like the picture even better. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and maybe even share it on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.